All right, g'day IB psychologists. If you're wondering how to do the descriptive statistics for your IA, in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what you need to do. The first question you're gonna ask is, are you going to apply the mean, median, or mode to your data, right? What average are you going to use? You need to apply one of these. So remember, you've just done an experiment. You've got two sets of data. Hopefully your experiment had two conditions. So you've got the results from one condition and the results from the other, right? Two columns of raw data. You now have to apply the average. Now you'll choose the mean if your data was ratio or interval and you didn't have any outliers. You'll do the median if your data was ratio or interval and you did have outliers. If your data was ordinal, then you'll do the median. And if your data was nominal, then you'll choose the mode. Now, very few IAs gather nominal data and it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so that's why uh, generally my advice is to avoid gathering this level of data. If you're a teacher watching this and you haven't yet done the IAs, but if you have gathered nominal data in your experiment, it's no problem at all. So that's how you decide, simple enough, if you do the mean, median, or mode. Now, what these levels of measurement mean, I'll explain at the end, right, in case you need help with that, and also give you some tips as to what level of data uh, your, yours might be. All right, so that's the first step, mean, median, or mode, we've got that sorted. The second step we have to do is apply the spread or uh, also called the dispersion. So now you've calculated your average, uh, which is the central tendency, the IB calls it in the guide. Now we have to figure out uh, how to calculate the second measure, which is the spread. So if you calculated the mean, right, because your data was ratio interval and you did not have outliers, standard deviation is what you should calculate. If you had this level of data, but you did have outliers, use the median, apply the interquartile range. If your data was ordinal, uh, straight ordinal data, then you would uh, apply the range. If you gathered nominal data, now if you go to the IB's official website where they give you help with descriptive statistics and inferential statistics, by the way, I highly recommend going and checking that out, it's really, really useful. Then they suggest the variation ratio to uh, measure the spread for the nominal data. However, uh, in uh, previous exam sessions, the IA guidance is actually, sorry, the IB guidance is actually, if you've done nominal data, you don't need to calculate a measure of dispersion, right? So it's that simple. There we have mean and standard deviation for ratio interval data without outliers, the median for ratio interval data and the interquartile range with outliers, uh, the median for straight ordinal data and the range, and then the mode for nominal data. Now, what do these levels of measurement mean? Let's start at the beginning. Nominal data, right, means your data can be categorized into different groups. Yes or no, what's your favorite color? Green, yellow, red, right? Uh, we can't rank it from highest to lowest. A good example, Loftus and Palmer's uh, car crash experiment with the broken glass. Did you see broken glass? Yes or no, that's nominal data. I can't rank that top to bottom, I can just put it into two categories. So if we can categorize it, but we can't rank it, it's nominal. Ordinal data is data we can rank from highest to lowest, but the uh, gaps in between each value are not necessarily consistent. Now the most common example of ordinal data in IB Psychology IAs is when you apply a Likert scale. So if you ask your participants, uh, give me a rating like one to seven, how well did you comprehend that passage, one to seven, um, you know, like that kind of scale of rating, right? That is ordinal data. Uh, so now ratio, uh, interval data is when you can rank highest to lowest, but there is uh, consistent intervals in between each measurement. And ratio data is when there's consistent intervals, but there, there can be a true zero. So for ratio interval data, um, for examples are like measures of speed, measures of time, or uh, the IB, if we go back to that official page, considers memory tests, how much you remembered on a memory, like free recall tests as ratio level data. All right now, if you're not sure which uh, level of uh, data your um, uh, your dependent variable, like what you calculated, first port of call, ask your teacher. Right. Second, um, pop a question in the comments, and we'll see if you can help you out. Now, just a note on this: there is a high level of subjectivity. Right. There's a lot of arguments about is a Likert scale ordinal data or is it interval data? Um, you know, generally in psychology and psychometric testing, it's considered interval, but the IB considers it ordinal. Loftus and Palmer's, you know, or like is, is is memory really ratio data? Like, can you have zero, zero, a true zero, but can you have no memory at all? It can be it can be frustrating and highly subjective um, and debatable. So just stick with those general guidelines. Memory tests generally are in here. Uh, Likert scales are in here. Uh, time and speed uh, in this level. I think that pretty much 
covers most of the types of data you're going to gather um, for your IA. Now, a quick point, you don't need to explain how and why you applied these different tests or these different uh, calculations to your data. You don't even actually have to mention the level of measurement that you used in your IA. And in fact, I encourage my students not to do that because like in case in case they get it wrong or in case you know you have an examiner who thinks um, maybe that the interval data and ordinal data, or it, it could be a little bit confusing, just you don't need to mention it as long as you know why you did it. But you don't even have to explain that in your IA. And in fact, if word count is an issue, I would encourage you uh, not to explain uh, how and why you applied these statistic, uh, descriptive, stati descriptive statistics as long as you do it properly. The one time I do tell my students uh, to state the level of measurement is in the inferential statistics, but I tell them, I encourage uh, all my students to gather data that's at least ordinal, and then that means they'll choose the Man whitney u or the Wilcoxon test for the inferential statistics. So I don't tell them to, to distinguish between ordinal interval and ratio, I just get them to say that they're, or understand why their data is at least ordinal, and then that's one of the, the, the factors in their decision for which inferential statistical test to apply. But I'll explain more of that in later videos and I also have videos on inferential statistics. There we are, I hope that's pretty straightforward. Remember one mean, median or mode and then apply one of the standard deviation into quartile range or the range depending on your level of measurement. Good luck. If you've got a question, pop it in the comments if that was helpful. Uh, I think leaving a like or commenting, I think that helps out um, algorithms or something like that. Uh, that'd be much appreciated too. Good luck. Cheers.